Time for an update on the progress of my experimental Great Salt Lake closed ecosystem. It's been running for 15 months. It seems to be doing well. It is located at USU in a south facing window. There is no overhang over this window, so it gets many hours of direct sunlight. Outside, you can see the latest attempt to render Cache Valley uninhabitable. Last week we had inversions with deadly PM 2.5 levels. That was followed by freezing rain. Today we have a foot of fresh snow. As you can see, this is a typical office environment, so the sample also gets many hours of indirect light. Um, let's see what else what is here. There's my office. There's a bob. Uh, there's our new video wall. It's got several of USU's network visualization tools running on it. Uh, keep scanning around. Here's some more network monitoring. This is the IP visualizer. If you're interested in these network visualizations, they are available for download. The source is GPL. We have created a few YouTube videos that describe them in more detail. Next, we come to um, Guan Yu, a darknet monitor, a GOIP visualization, and some more instances of the organic visualizer. Um, pineapple plant. This is an early attempt at a closed ecosystem. This one's fresh water. It's about seven years old. Originally it contained more variability including many visible invertebrates, but after a few months most of the system collapsed. Now it is primary producers. Duckweed and algae. And that brings us back to the orange tree and the Great Salt Lake closed ecosystem. Let's move in here and focus on the sample. This is a five gallon glass carboy. It is sealed with a black rubber stopper. You can read more about the initial conditions in the notes to this video. The visual distortions are due to the curvature and ribbing of the glass carboy. After a year and three months, the sealed ecosystem has not collapsed. There are still many brine shrimp. However, there have been some changes. Now much of the available biomass is concentrated in the bottom as this fibrous algae. It almost looks like spirogyra. There is also a thin layer of algae in the inside surface of the bottle. The sand in the bottom of the bottle seems to be a reservoir of nutrients. There is a lot of algal growth on the surface of the sand. The brine shrimp seem to have figured out how to harvest off of all these sources. You see them nipping at and grazing and abrading uh, the alg all the various kinds of algae and they seem to get some kind of nutrition from it. In addition to the algae, the surface of the sand is now covered by tiny tan pellets. They seem to be about a fourth of a millimeter in size. They may be failed brine shrimp cysts or brine shrimp fecal pellets or possibly some mineral precipitation or maybe some combination of the above. The next step is to see if I can create a viable closed ecosystem of the Great Salt Lake in a smaller container. If the weather and my wife don't kill me, I plan to go to the Great Salt Lake again and get some more samples. And maybe this time try closed ecosystems in one gallon and two gallon bottles.